Hi, I'm Taylor with AgriSpray Drones. I know there's a lot of interest in our T30, and I know we can't get to everybody, and it's kind of hard to make it here for a demo. So we're going to do a live, as, we, as live as we can, demo for you guys. We're going to do a complete walkthrough of how we set up a T30, how we map a field, how we spray. We're going to show you battery swaps, tank refills, and just how the drone operates. Talk about some of the key features as well. We're going to post this up on our Facebook page and on, on YouTube, and then we'll open it up for comments and questions later. Thanks. First thing you do with the T30 is boot up your remote controller and then you want to plan your field. So you want to input a field boundary. So go to plan field, walk with RC. Now we can actually collect a field boundary with the RC using the GPS location of the remote. But instead, we're just going to use these crosshairs right here in the middle. And we're going to just add our boundary points. So you can kind of listen to the remote tell you that it has has had a waypoint added, waypoint added every time you add one. And you can make this as complex as you want or as simple as you want. For us today, we're just doing a simple rectangular field. So once you have your field boundary established, you can change these locations of these points to fine tune them. So tap on it, turns it green, and you can use the directional arrows here to just tap it left and right or down and then tap off of it and that'll save it and you can also drag it around so if I just hold it I can move it around as well so there's our four-sided boundary and you can add in more boundary points I can put one up here and you see it pulls it off of that line there and if I can just want to delete one you just double tap on it that deletes that boundary point so now we want to set our flight path. So we want to fly east and west parallel to that boundary there. We'll double tap on it. That moves our flight path east and west. And then we want our route spacing, so our swath width. We want that to be 29 feet. And you can see our start point is right there. And that's, that's where we want it um, for this operation. You know, normally we would be doing the whole field, but for now, we do it right there. You can reset a start point. Let's say you want to start on this side of the field. Set it right there. Hit save. Now our start point's there. So it's very customizable as far as how you actually make your map, customize your map. Uh, a lot of very customizable features here. You can set downwind buffers. Um, you can set whole field buffers. There's just a lot of things you can do. Okay. So now we have our boundary the way we want it. We're going to go back and then we're going to hit save and we'll just input a name here demo done save now if you were just marking out a bunch of fields uh, one day you can just hit new route and now you can plan another field you can go ahead and mark out another boundary and you can just make all your boundaries all in one day and then when you show up to the field you already have them then you just pull them up so let's take a look how that looks. So let's say we already have our field boundary map made in the office. Come out to the field. We just hit this button up here. Here's all of our fields right here that we have mapped. So this is our demo field, 39.2 acres. Tap on that. And now we can edit it if we want to. If we want to you know, change our start point, if we want to do a route segment and you know, just do half the field, that clips it in half for us. This is also, hey, I'll operate multiple drones or do test plots um, using that route segment tool. And then you can save it and you can override it or you can, um, you know, save it as a new field every time. Really up to you. And I should note that on our field list here, you can upload all of these fields. These are all different fields and field boundaries. You can upload all these to the cloud. Every one of our customers gets a lifetime uh, free access to cloud storage for all their maps as applied data and so if you upload this it go on to a, an online account where you can then access the map transfer the map download it to the new remote so here's our field we're just going to hit uh, use and now we're going to go ahead and set up our drone
Here's the T30. One person can carry it, um, especially if you have the battery out in an empty tank. It weighs about 62 pounds right now, the way it sits. <clears throat> so before I unfold this, I like to go ahead and put a battery in it. That way it gets booted up while I'm unfolding it. T30 batteries are a modular um, wireless design. Essentially, that means they're just like a drill battery. It just plugs right in. So you can see if you click on the power icon, it shows you the charge. This one's fully charged. And then you can actually go ahead and turn that battery on. That battery's on now. Now whenever we drop it in, it's, the drone's going to boot up automatically. There you hear it. There it's booting up. So we'll go ahead and unfold it. T30 uses a cam lock system for all of the arm locks. Each of these cam locks has a sensor inside the arm. That way the drone knows if you don't have one locked in. If you forget to do an arm or you don't have it locked all the way down, the remote will tell you which arm it is and if it's not locked, it will not allow you to take off. These propellers are held out with centrifugal force. You notice there's no locking mechanism on the actual propellers themselves. It's just the force from spinning around that holds them out. All right, so this is, uh, we had not paired this remote to the drone yet. Um, because it's a different remote than what came with the drone. So yours will automatically pair, but we have to pair this one ourselves today. So we're just going to hit linking. Hold down the power button for five seconds. There we're linked. Now we can get to it. So now that we're linked, the drone's booted up. We're going to go ahead and pull our field up just like we had it. And we're going to set our rate. So we do most everything at a two gallon rate. So hit two gallons. We're going to go full speed, 22.6 feet, that's feet per second. We're going to go at 10 feet high, so that's radar height. Um, and you'll notice, so right here you have two gallons per acre selected. That tells you that this field is going to require 77.8 gallons. And we're going to run 1.84 gallons per minute at full speed. If we slow our speed down, you can see our gallons per minute actually changes. So this is dynamic flow, which means that the uh, drone pumps will match uh, the proper flow rate to get your two gallons per acre that you input or whatever you input there. Now we can also, we have an option here to do a connection route. So this field here, it's open, there's no trees, no power lines. But let's say you had you know, trees around the bottom side of this field, top side, you had one entry point right here, one way in and out with the drone. If you don't want to fly up and over the trees. So you can actually make a gate, as some guys call it, or a connection point where you can actually take these crosshairs right here and you put them out here inside the field boundary a little bit, just in front of where you want to fly in and out, and add a connection point. Then the drone would fly to that point and then fly to the start point and fly there on the way back too. Really, really cool feature. We don't need that, so we're just going to say yes. And now we were loaded up, so now we can go ahead and load up our water in the drone and uh, start flying this field. We use uh, Q 
keyless uh, remote start generator. So I'll start that up. Get our water pump. We use uh, just a fuel nozzle, really easy. Breaker tripped. Restart the breaker, we'll be right back. You can come take a look at this generator, see what kind of generator we run. This is a 9500 running watt generator with a 240 volt 50 amp plug. There we go. We retrofit our T30s with a fill through nozzle on top, fill through port. That way you can just plug in and away it goes. While this is filling, I'm gonna go ahead and purge our pumps. The T30 is equipped with these solenoids, these air relief solenoids here on every nozzle set. So whenever you just hold down the spray button, it actually starts the pumps, detects air in the lines. Once it purges that air out, then it automatically shuts off the pumps. You don't have to crack any valves. It's just a simple push right here. And then you can see our pumps are purging right now. Now it shows that they're successful. They're purged, they're good to go. Also, as we, ref as we fill this, maybe you guys can see this. Yeah, we'll go in the trailer so you can see. All right, our tank's full. We'll come in here and you can take a look at the screen. That's better. Okay, you notice on the top of the screen, we have this green line going all the way across over to 8.15 gallons. So that shows how many gallons is in the drone. And this will tick down uh, as it empties and it goes up as it refills. We also have an icon here that shows us where we're in the field we're gonna run out. So that's three flight paths over. So we're gonna go down, back, partially the way down, and then run out. But I'm gonna show you something while the drone's flying that uh, actually uh, will make it stop at the end of the field. Let's just check our settings real quick just to make sure everything is set where we want it. It's set to return to home. Uh, okay, I like our altitude there. Sprayer setting. You can turn on auto obstacle avoidance if you want. Okay, everything's where we want it here. So now all we do is we hit start. It's gonna upload the flight route and all the information to the drone and then we can uh, set our connection route altitude so we're going to set that at nine feet because it's a flat field and we can do our speed so we set that speed all the way up now all we do make sure our takeoff point is clear and we just slide to take off So the drone goes up to its nine foot altitude that you set. It'll go to its start point, which is just right there. It'll lower it down to the 10 foot height that we set, and then it'll start to work. So there it sprang on its flight path. You can kind of see the mist coming out. The height of the drone is kept with the radar. So that's a little canister on the bottom of the drone. It's an actual, uh, they call it a DBF imaging radar. Um, it actually senses surfaces. So it's sensing the ground height. You can see right now our altitude is nine feet. If we go in here, you can see we have it set to 9.8. As it flies, you can actually adjust your altitude if you need. You can adjust it autonomously here. You can crank it up, crank it down, wherever you want. So at 10 feet, you can adjust your speed, adjust your spray rate, hit confirm, and then the drone does what you tell it to do. There's our drone right there. It's that red arrow. So there you see it's traveling down the field. The remote will uh, keep the drone in the center of the screen at all times. And you can zoom in, zoom out, and the drone will stay in the center that we don't lose track of it. 
you can also change it to where you can scroll around if you want or back there here we have our uh, FPV camera in the bottom right corner we, well, on the T30 we actually have two FPV cameras so we can click on those there's our front facing camera so you see what the drone sees and here's our rear facing camera and then also down here in the bottom it again keeps that drone right in the middle of the middle of that screen so as a drone makes it down here to the end of the field you'll notice that it doesn't actually turn around it's going to actually slide over and then spray backwards on the way back this saves a little efficiency up here at the top of the screen you can see our gallons are ticking down so we have about five gallons left in that drone and then I'll zoom in here so you can see the drone so there it's sliding over at the end of the pass and then now it's spraying backwards. So we click on that backwards look facing camera. There the drone's going backwards. And I should note this is all autonomous flight. I haven't touched uh, any flight controls since it took off. Uh, it's all autonomously flying and it's going to autonomously return back to home to us. So how do we know when it's going to return to home and where it's going to return to home? Well as I mentioned We've got this icon here that shows us where the drone's going to run out, where the tank's going to be empty. But the best way to refill it, the most efficient point to refill, would be to stop it on this side of the field. That way we make full passes. And so you see there's another icon right here, a little purple tank looking icon. So that shows us that's the most efficient refill point. So if we go into our settings, we'll scroll up here, it says spraying complete action at refill point. So we've got that turned on. That means that the, the refill point, which is that purple and, and white icon, that's the refill point. So it's going to return to home at that point right there. And you can adjust all of these settings on the fly. So if I wanted to change my return to home height, I can change it um, on the fly. If I wanted to stop the drone at any time, I just hit that stick in any direction, and it'll stop. Um, so it's extremely safe, you know, if, there, if you ever do find yourself in a situation where you need to bring the drone, drone to a stop, you can just pause it at any time. Here it comes back. The drone does have spherical obstacle avoidance. The T30 has both lateral, so 360 degrees lateral, and obstacle avoidance above it as well. So it'll sense power lines above it, and it'll sense any obstacle bigger than a centimeter in diameter, uh, 360 degrees around it. So you see the drone slowing down right there. It's going to slide over and line up on its next route and then save that point right there. Now it's returning to home automatically. So this is automatic flight. I'm not touching anything. It's, it's coming home automatically. It's probably going to sense us, actually. Yeah, there it's actually sensing us. So you see it's sensing an obstacle. That's us in the, in the red. So now it's home. So whenever the T-30 comes home, it actually hovers at 10 feet. It doesn't land. It just hovers at 10 feet, and then it asks you if you want to manually or auto land. So click auto landing, and it'll bring itself down automatically. And you'll notice it landed kind of on the side of the ditch right there, but that's okay. You can actually take off in a pretty steep incline or decline, and it'll level, level itself out before it takes off. So at this point, we're, we're going to go ahead and refill the drone, replace the battery, and uh, have it continue. So we'll put our remote down, we'll grab our nozzle, turn on our pump, grab a fresh battery. We can turn that battery on as we make our way to the drone. Pull the battery out, pop a new one in. Whenever these batteries warm up, you can usually get two flights uh, out, of, uh, out of one battery or two tank loads out of one battery on efficient fields. Um, these batteries are cold, uh, so we're ending up with about 50% battery left. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap them out every time. And honestly, I like to swap them out every time no matter what, because it doesn't take any extra time. Once we make our way back to the controller after this tank is full, the drone's gonna be booted up the satellite's going to be found and it's going to be ready to fly, so you might as well just change the battery every time.
So here you see the drone's booted up. It's found all of its satellites. We have 19 satellites back. And all we have to do is hit continue. It's going to re-upload the new route to the drone. And then we can reset these if we want to. And then slide to execute. So the drone's going to level itself out first. And then it's going to take off. So it returns back to where it quit spraying, lowers down to 10 feet, and starts up again. With the T30, you get a 29-foot swath when you're spraying at 10 feet. So a lot of guys ask, ask you know, how does it achieve that, that swath width? And that's due to the vortex coming out of the, the props. We're going to go ahead and plug in this battery. This is the battery we took off the drone. And you can see the charger recognizes that it has one battery plugged in right there. It starts blinking green. That means it's charging. And you can see uh, we've got three bars right now. This battery will likely be charged by the time the drone lands. Um, if not, that's why we carry three batteries. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, a delay in how quick you get it plugged on there. But this charger and that generator will charge batteries as fast as you deplete them out of the, out of the drone. But three batteries and one charger, that's all you need for all day operations with the T30. As long as you have a generator on site, at least 9,000 watts uh, or larger. So this is the job, I mean, whenever you're spraying out in the field, you know, on, for whole field application, for typical farmland, this is what you do. You just kind of sit here, get yourself a lawn chair, cooler with drinks, and watch your drone fly. Drone does all the work for you, you just have to refill it, replace the batteries, and hit continue. It keeps track of completed area uh, for each flight, and total completed area, you see right now we've covered about five acres. So you see there it's detecting the fence on that side. So it's detecting that pole right there. That's what that yellow line is right there. It detected that pole. It knew it wasn't close enough to stop, but if it got too close to that pole, that would have turned red instead of green, and it would have stopped itself. Obstacle avoidance is very good on these T-30s. And the range is also very good. So we're actually flying a half mile out right now. You can, you can see the drone there against the, uh, the tree line. That's a half mile away. I don't have the antennas folded up. So if we were to fold the antennas up, you can see we get, uh, we could actually fly it further away and, and maintain connection. So flying half mile long rows in corn, no big deal. We have a live battery readout right there, 61%. Whenever the battery gets too low, critically low, the drone will begin an automatic return to home uh, in some cases. Uh, in other cases, you can you know, make it just keep spraying. Um, and if it gets you know, seriously low, then it will begin to descend and land on automatically. You can also pause it at any time, like right here. So let's say I wanted to stop the drone right where it was at for one reason or another. Two ways I can do that, I can, I can hit pause. And there you go, the drone stops, it's coming to a stop right now. So let's say something happens, I accidentally paused it, so how do you continue? Well, you see right here, you have location of the drone, you have location of the endpoint, or the uh, where it stops spraying at, and you have two other locations. You have two, and then if I move the drone to the left a little bit, you'll see one. So you can actually restart the drone at point one, point two, or the breakpoint. So if I just hit continue from the breakpoint, the drone's going to fly back to that red dot. There it goes. Turn and face parallel with the line, and there it is, spraying again. It's painting the line green again. So you can see every every green line is where the drone has sprayed. Every yellow line 
as where the drone uh, has not sprayed but where it will. And it paints green where it actually sprayed. So the yellow are the planned flight routes and the green are the actual uh, spray routes. The white, you can see here, is uh, other flight paths. So that's where it flew but it did not spray. So here comes the drone again. And again, it's gonna go back to that uh, most efficient refill point, which is on the close side of the field. So it's gonna stop, slide over, and then fly. It actually flies backwards to us. That's just to save a little bit of efficiency time. So let's say you don't like where the drone's gonna land at. Like right now, it's hovering right over that ditch. So I can actually fly the drone backwards. There it is, now we're lined up where we want to. And now I can just bring it down with a stick and it'll automatically land right here instead. And let's say you do land it in a spot where you don't want it to land. You can actually take off manually at any point in time I can just take the drone off right now and manually fly it to wherever I want to fly it to. So the drone's up. I can move it closer to me and then bring it down. With the T30, you have as much control as you want or as little control as you want. It's completely autonomous when you need it to be and it's completely a manual when you want it to be. So here you see, you can see my battery right now. That's almost fully charged. If I were to plug it on right after I pulled it off, it would have been fully charged, but that's why we have a third battery. That way we can go ahead and take this battery and plug it on the drone. So while the drone's filling, I'm going to go ahead and plug this battery back onto the charger. There we go. So now you see it's still charging that battery. It's going to switch over to this battery whenever that first battery is done charging. Well, boys, I think we're out of water. And you can see the drone's already got the satellites found. Usually it takes about 20 seconds to uh, refine satellites and boot up whenever you drop that battery in. Super quick boot up times. And if you had a faster pump, it'd be even faster fill up times. Right now we're just using about a 10 gallon per minute pump. Uh, you can get these pumps uh, as high as about 20 gallon or 18 gallon per minute uh, to reduce how much time it takes to fill up. So you can see here, ran out of water in our big tank. I've only got 5.4 gallons in the drone, so it shows that it's gonna run out right there. And you see it doesn't have that uh, efficient refill point because it can't make it there. But that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and spray this tank out. And I'll show you how it stops autonomously when the tank's empty. So right now the drone's flying at about 15 miles an hour. That's max spray speed for the T30. You can fly as slow as about two miles an hour. So if you want really good penetration, you can really slow this thing down. You just wanna cover acres, you can speed it up. The rates you can apply from range from anywhere between uh, half gallon to the acre. You can do as little as half gallon all the way up to 20. Um, it's Again, completely controlled autonomously. It has a, uh, an electromagnetic flow meter, actually two of them. 
So it senses mass flow coming through uh, the pumps. So the density of the product shouldn't matter. It actually just senses mass flow coming through. So you can see in here, our first battery is already done. And our second battery is now charging. So we can go ahead and pull that battery off the charger. And now it's ready whenever, whenever we're ready to land the drone and swap batteries. We'll go ahead and pause right here. And uh, I'll come back to you in just a second. All right, we're back. We had a custom applicator down the road stop by and, and see what we were doing. He said he had never seen one of these things before, so we, we indulged him. Uh, but that's it, guys. So the drone landed here. Um, if we were doing this all day long, we just keep cycling through. As you can see, you know, the drone's landed. We've got a fresh battery ready to go, so you can just keep cycling batteries continually all day long. And like I said, as they warm up, so these, these were cold right now. It's about 40 degrees. These are cold batteries. When you're operating in warmer temperatures, you'll get a lot more efficiency out of these lithium ion batteries. So you just keep swapping them and charging them all day long. Just keep filling your tank all day long. And this, this is the job, it's super easy. Uh, nothing hard to it. Um, we're gonna bring you some more videos of some different types of operations with the T30 and the T20. There is a ton more you can do with these drones. This is really just the tip of the iceberg here. I mean, whole field application is obviously um, a big part of what we do, what our customers do. But you know, when you look at spot spraying weeds, you look at mountainous terrain, uh, you look at fields that have uh, trees surrounding them or obstacles inside of them, um, you know, orchards, vineyards, uh, greenhouse painting. I mean, the, it just goes on and on and on, forestry work. So we'll bring you some more videos here this winter. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thanks.